Hey, I'm coach Natalie Nakase, and I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise a star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat, don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and are your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Chill. S-L-T Nation, what it do? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. We are talking to rising stars in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing what, KT? Big dream. B-I-G. Except today, Today's dream is about 5'2 and is a menace on the court. She is a all-world basketball player, UCLA alum. And guess what, Kevin? I'm jealous because she got that bling bling on yes, her sir. fingers. 2022 WNBA champion, assistant coach for the Las Vegas Aces, Natalie Nikase. Welcome to the show. How are you today, coach? I'm great. I'm excited. Thanks. Thanks for that intro. That was amazing. Thank you. Oh, the, hey, that's the look. That's the least that I can do. <laughs> I felt like a kid ever since I found out we was about to do this this show uh, secretly. I'm just gonna come out and say it right now before we even get started. Asia Wilson. Right. That's all that need to be said. That's all that need to be said. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> wish yeah. I was. Wish I was six eight. You know what I'm saying? So I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope my wife enjoyed that joke. Yeah. Hey, I, <laughs> I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, the Louisiana, Mr. Yeet is in the building. I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, my partner in crime, the head coach, KT. Kev, how you feeling today, man? B. Jones, I, I'm feeling great. And you, you said Aja Wilson, Aja Wilson, but man, I used to have the, the biggest crush on Becky Hammond, man. So... <sighs> Hey, we we accomplishing dreams. Two oh, years, yes. season three, we Kevin and I are finally accomplishing some major dreams out here, and it's all possible for Natalie. Hey, Natalie, before we get into your story, get ready because we're gonna heat you up a little bit with the Sports Life Talk initiation. We got to pay the bills in just for a second. Check this out. This is your first time listening to the show. Thank you so much, gracias. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, we need to ask a small, small favor from you. Won't cost you a penny. And on the count of three in Sports Life Talk tradition, we need you to do two small things. One like this show so we can blow up to the flow up you heard me and then we also need you to subscribe to the show become part of our family kevin and i we don't do fans we don't do followers we do family members and on the count of three we want to welcome you to the sports life talk family here we go coach hey, you, you want me to throw you the rock coach i know you in the yeah. monster there it is coach you ready your people gonna yeah. rock it rock with us yes i'm ready I'm all right ready. here we go one two three <laughs> Welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. Hey, we appreciate the love. Natalie, we hope we we hope you're having a good time because now it's about to get serious. All right. Now it's your moment to shine and do what you've done since the since the 90s. You've been a beast. And so now it's time for the Sports Life Talk initiation. Are you ready, coach? Ready. Ready. All right, here we go, KT. All right, coach. Initiate you into the SLT family. You gotta give us your top five music artists. My top five. In no particular order, right? No, no order. No, no order. order. Okay. Number one, again, I was born in the what? 19, I was born in 1980. Uh, Jan Jackson's number one. Oh. Like, without a doubt. Just a beast. Just yeah, an yeah. icon. Monster. Uh, and Michael Jackson. No, we're going Jan Jackson. That's number one. Um, yeah. Two, let's go Rihanna. Ooh. Uh, just, a badass, a boss. <laughs> hey, yeah, for real. Billionaire. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what, else? what else can you say? Um, number three. I mean, T.I. is number three. Um, Tip. Number four. 
Oh, I'm going to change it up, change the speeds. I'm going Adele. Okay. Adele, just, you know. All right, now. Okay. She goes deep. She goes deep. Hey, she's she's... To the concert in Vegas. She goes deep. Um, shoot, number five. Uh, let's go Usher. Oh, you can't go. Hey, can't you go killing wrong. Vegas right now. When I get out to Vegas, I'm going to Adele and Usher. That's there a, you go. We, we got to <laughs> do the whole. <laughs> I'm advertising. Kevin, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a Las Vegas commercial gonna come on right after this bit. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, KT, what you giving them, man? B Jones, it's 2023. It's a big year. And oh, this is a big guest. So you know what, man? We're about, to set, we're about to set the record today, B Jones. Oh, we I, I hope, I hope you hope your fingers ready, man. <sighs> we're we're a custom coach you're giving people five, but for you, you're a champion, you're dope. B yes. Jones. Uh-huh. Give a 12. We have to give a 12. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm from Louisiana, coach. I don't know if I can count that out, but here we go. <laughs> Kevin, we broke now. We ain't give got no all the money. Man, we, know, we already broke anyway, man. It, it, it's all good. This, this is for coach. This is for our new place. <laughs> this is for our new coach. All right. All right. I'm with you, Kevin. All right, coach. Who is your favorite superhero and why? Superhero. Um... I didn't watch too many superhero movies, so I'm just gonna go to something more personal. It's just my dad. Um, you know, unfortunately, he passed away a year and a half ago. But my best friend, my rock, uh, the reason why I'm in, you know, professional sports is at the end of the day, he told me, Natalie, whatever you do, your job, whether it's basketball, you got to be the best. And so, professional sports, you're obviously at the top. And so, without him te te teaching me discipline, hard work, and a pretty much an attitude of like. You never want to give a, sorry, never want to give a fuck about what people think. Um, I love it. Because sometimes that discourages you, right? Like when you think about other people's opinions and they're doubting you, shoot, it could even be family members that could doubt your dreams. And so when my dad taught me that, it was sky's the limit, basically. I'm sending this to all my family members. <laughs> no doubt, because uh, we need more of them rocking with us. You know? All right. <laughs> Coach, since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? You guys got me on this one. Um, looking at it, thinking about it, it's probably Live Your Life by T.I. Hey! <laughs> I mean, kind of with what, you know, my dad preached. is like, just do what you want, you know, no matter what, no matter what people think. Again, negativity, just like brush it off, flip it to a positive and do what you want and do what makes you happy. The swagger of a hustler and the spirit of a college kid. You remember that line? That was my favorite line out of the whole song. All right, Coach. So if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them, they could be either dead or alive. Who would it be and why? This is a great question. Um, I went back and forth with a couple of people, but uh, probably Muhammad Ali. Mm, um, ooh, legendary. More, you know, I looked at the impact of sports great you know he was the greatest right he was he was the goat he was the greatest of all time um but what he sacrificed to make changes in the world to make the world better i mean he literally went to jail um and for for a time of when we needed change and we needed improvement we needed equality like you know it's different now i get it i don't know how many athletes would put themselves on the line to go to jail um but to me that just shows so much selflessness about you know your life because you're giving it up pretty much and that you want to always stand behind i mean believe stand behind what you believe and to me he's he's inspired me i still read his quotes i, I watch his movies i watch his documentaries you know just to continue that inspiration and so yeah i would love to know why and how he did all that and coach he did it in his prime like i mean he could have been winning fights at that time instead right. he still he took a stand so no you are absolutely right about ali Right. And he trained underwater. I'm like, who does that? Like, I mean, who, I mean guys do that now, but like, that was back then, right? Like, probably right, right. extreme mm -hmm. things and just always wanting to do the best. And it's hard. Like, you know, I've worked with a lot of professional athletes and it's hard to stay on top. Like, everyone wants to, you know, knock you out and um, discourage you. So, just again, I appreciate for all the changes he's made, you know, in the world. And hopefully we could improve and continue to improve.
I mean, if I could fight like him too, I wouldn't be the fr- afraid to go to jail. Yeah, you can't fight. You can't fight. No, I said if I could fight like him, I wouldn't be afraid to go. Uh, <laughs> hey, you make a good point. Maybe yeah. that's fine because he could just knock everybody yeah, out. Yeah, he can knock everybody out. I'm going to be the one getting knocked out. But hey, that's a whole other story. All right, so if you hit that subscribe button or thinking about doing so, please do and leave us your top five, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. On behalf of the SLT Nation, we want to welcome Coach to our family. So, B. Jones, take it away, brother. All right, Coach, welcome to the family. First, we, we need a nickname. What, 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 what is your nickname, either on the court, or what, what does the players call you, Coach? Uh, Look, she sat back on that one, Kevin. She's like, oh. Uh-uh. Because everyone would naturally say, like, oh, Nat. No, I don't. I don't like that. You know, I don't. You know, because it represents something like small and <laughs> annoying. So don't call me that. Um, God, people ask me this all the time. I'm gonna call you Coach Nana. N A N A. Y'all see it? Y'all see yeah. it on the screen? Co- Coach Nana. Can, can we call you that, Coach? That's fine. I'll take all that. Right. Coach, Coach Nana. Nana. Okay. <laughs> all right, Coach. Well, take us back to Orange County. I, 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 we've had the privilege of doing this show for this is our third season. And uh, we've actually had the opportunity to interview a lot of ballers coming out of the OC. And, you know, I, I think it's probably one of the most underrated hooping communities or hooping, hooping uh, talent beds in the nation. Tell us what it was like for you coming up out the OC. And when did you fall in love with basketball? Um, basketball actually in Orange County was pretty competitive. Uh, to believe it or not. But, you know, our school, my high school was really competitive. It was one of the top. And then my senior year, luckily, um, we were really good and we ended up winning CIF. Um, So, I mean, it was just, and then back then too, it wasn't like club, right? Like there's a thousand club teams. Back then it was just called AAU and you just had one team, (laughs) you know, with all stars around, you know, the county. So I was, you know, just lucky to grow up in a more competitive, I think, environment than it is now. I mean, just calling what it is. And then um, the way I fell in love with basketball was my dad, like my hero that I talked about. I mean, he was so passionate about basketball, so obsessed. And so we didn't know any better, right? He had three three girls. I was the youngest of three. I was actually supposed to be a boy and my name was supposed to be Nathan. Um, but he raised us like three uh, athletes. And by shoot, the time I was 11, I had two trainers and, you know, worked out every single day, didn't have days off, didn't have vacation. So. Um, I think I was lucky to have a father figure who was passionate about something. And then I just fell in love with it too. Now, do, do your sisters play ball too? Did, did you, yeah. did you guys, yeah. did you, did you, uh, are they taller than you or how tall, how tall are your sisters? Cause, cause they I look were. at your highlights. Huh? They were at the moment. They were when I was younger. So they'd be, you know, beat up on me and rebound and push me, <laughs> you know, just push me out of the way. But now our oldest actually is the shortest one now. I don't know how we really changed yeah. um but they're three four years older than me so they used to beat me up all the time um which helped right like if you study you know families and stuff usually the youngest is usually the best because i got to train with three four year old you know right uh, right older than me and then my dad threw me in with boys at, at the same time like hey you need he his whole theory was i never want you to be the best on the team so he always wanted me to be you know um having to be able to rise up to the occasion of not being the best how to you know use my smarts because I was small. So, well, this story is about to get interesting, but I'm curious since your dad was such a such an influential person in your life. What what, what did he say to you, or what was the feeling around the house when y'all opened up the Louisiana uh, the uh, L.A. Times and saw your name as the O.C. Player of the Year back in high school? You want you want me to be honest? What he yeah. Said? I mean, probably just like a quick congrats, but it's like then now na- now na- now what? Well, now what is what now we're about what? to talk about? Because <laughs> like, you turned down scholarships yeah. to pursue your dream to play at UCLA. Now, I, I mean, free money. You turned it down just to walk on to pursue your dreams. Tell us a little bit about that decision and how did that all come about? I mean, it kind of goes back to how my, da- my dad raised me, right? Like you have to earn everything. Nothing's free in life. I would, he always used to tell me. So, you know, ha- given you know, an offer actually from UCI and the guy, the coach was like, Hey, I'll give you a starting position. If you come here, you know, and I'm like, what, like, why would you start me? Like, you don't even know me. You know, I thought that was weird as just a natural, like gut feeling. I was like, Oh, I don't like that. But then when UCLA came around and offered me, you know, a walk on position and I'm like, you know, this is my dream school. Like, how do I turn down this, you know, you know, position. 
And then at the same time, the head coach was like, look, we can't guarantee you four years, but I can guarantee you, you know, your first year, but then you have to earn your scholarship. And I'm like, that's it. Like, wait till, <laughs> wait till you see me work. Like, wait till you see how, you know, I could lead and be a good teammate. And um, yeah, it was a no brainer. So me and my bet. dad. That's like, what you said, huh? You said bet. Yeah, I was like, good. <laughs> challenge me, great. And I always like a challenge. So yeah. All out. right. So you go to UCLA. So let me ask you this question. Um, we're going to do a little word association. All right. It's one word, one word. Are you ready? What does this word mean to you? First. 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 Just that simple. First. The best. The best. Well, well, let me tell you why I found that word to be amusing or uh, to be to be entertaining, because you were the first Asian American to play in the W uh, in WBL. You were the first Asian to win a WNBA title. I mean, it's just all of these first. You got first here, first there, first everywhere. W w is that is that come from your pops or, or, or is this just something you set out on the course and nobody can take you away from something? A goal. What, where does that come from? Yeah, you said it. It comes from my pops. Like it, like I said, like once I made, you know, Orange County Player of the Year, he's like, what's next? Like to him, it was always like, okay, keep going. Right. Like, okay, you think you're good. Stay humble, but no, keep going. And, um, you know, that just really fired me up for some reason. I don't know if it's a cultural thing. I don't know if it's my relationship with my dad, but my goal in life has always been, I want to make my dad proud. Now you five foot two, which I love watching the pictures of you out there working with the NBA players and the WNBA players. And you you can get it though. I mean, I'm like I'm tripping. I'm like I can tell you got those that, that jukes. You got that move, that agility. But but uh, going going back into this locker room, you were assistant coach for the Clippers for ten years. You took the Eric Spolster route. You watch videos for a while. You 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 earned it. Every bit of it, you've earned it. But but tell us, you know, I, I heard an interview of yours in which you talked about like. Like, you don't even look at the difference between coaching men and women. Like, th that's nothing to you. T tell us a little bit about that experience and, and how they differentiate. Well, for me, I mean, especially if you guys grew up in sports too, like, basketball is my comfort zone. The court is my comfort zone. Like, when, like I told you, right now, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> you're talking about myself and you're asking me all these personal questions. But you put me on a court, like, it's therapy for me. So when they, you know, when I first walked onto NBA court, like that's my comfort zone. You know, you got a basket, you got a hoop, you got guys that want to get better. You got women that want to get better. Like there's no difference, you know? And the biggest thing with coaching is you got to know your stuff. You got to study, you got to know film. And all, at the same time, you got to care about people and you got to care about, you know, wanting to help them get better. Um, care factor of wanting to help them on the outside of the court not just you know on the court and to me like that kind of comes natural to go back to my pops that's how he that's how he raised me so it's just natural well i'm gonna let you have a little fun right now i saw a picture of you with your whole los angeles i mean excuse me las vegas uh aces staff you guys were holding the trophy up it was a cool picture it probably was a surreal moment for you guys but uh led by becky hammond i want you to give your own take because i'm hoping they're watching this but tell us about that coaching staff tell her who who's the joker who's the funny one who's the serious one T tell us a little bit about that las vegas aces coaching staff <laughs> okay well becky she's the funny one She's, uh, she loves to have fun. She loves to play music, you know, in practice. She loves to dance. She loves to sing. Uh, and these are all things I didn't know, like going into, you know, our first season because we knew of each other, but we didn't know each other, you know, really well. Um, so we're always having fun. We're laughing. We're joking. Um, I'm the serious, I think I'm the serious one. Uh, I didn't think I was, but again, my dad raised me, you know, in a strict environment, a uh, very disciplined Tyler Marsh. He's, um, the kind one. He's uh, very caring. He has a big heart. And then uh, CT, she's the mother figure, um, but she keeps it real and she'll tell it like it is. So we all have, you know, different, you know, ingredients to fit. And at the end of the day, though, our head coach, she's Becky. She's one of the most genuine people I've ever met. 
Well, well, on the record, if y'all go back and watch some of our shows, Kevin and I, we predicted the Las Vegas Aces was going to win that championship a long, long, long time ago. But, you know, it's easy for us talking heads to sit on the camera and say what we think is going to happen. You were in the locker room. You were there practice day in and day out. Tell us a little bit about the, the hard work that went in, the dedication, the passion that it went in, especially in such a turmoil year where Brittany Griner is in prison. And I know that had to lay heavy on the hearts of all of those young ladies tell us a little about that locker room culture and how you guys were able to pull off this amazing feat and brought a championship to las vegas well you know like i mentioned becky she just loves to have fun and so she you know continues that wherever she is whether it's the locker room or whether it's on the court and so when you do allow that in your environment everybody can be themselves everybody can be authentic no one's like sitting you know real tight no one's like everyone's relaxed and so i think that's the biggest key was, you know, Becky from the jump just wanted to have a good time. And I think that's exactly why we came together so quickly. Um, now in reference with, with Brittany, you know, sometimes we question like, should we be, be playing basketball? You know, well, one of our, you know, sisters is over there. Um, and so that was tough. Like we had a lot of conversations, obviously a lot of emotions because we just didn't know what was going to happen. But um, we felt like it was best to our ability just to continue to play hard and con continue to play for her. So. Well, last question. You got all of, you got the USA team almost on your team with Kelsey and, and uh, Gray and, and Wilson. So you playing around champions on, on the highest level. But those those champions also have a major influential face in the game. Right. right. And so when I read articles or I see the clip, the press clippings with Kelsey Plum's comments about same percentage of revenue shared. I know that impacts your checks. Right. That impacts everybody in the WNBA. So what, what do you think needs to happen in order for these ladies? who are, I mean, I'm telling y'all, it's one of the greatest games I've ever seen. All of the best games I've seen over the last two years have been WNBA games. Don't get me wrong, I've seen some high-flying dunks, but I'm telling y'all, these WNBA games and these college girls basketball games are unreal. The competition level is crazy. So, Coach, what do you think is it going to take? Coach, nah, nah. What is your take on us getting this thing to blow up and to get the, fair, the same shared revenues and things of that nature? I mean, I think we just more, we need more people like you guys to support. I mean, just being dead honest, like we need more people to support, to put us out there. Um, obviously being, you know, on national television, all of our games or majority of our games would definitely help because the game, like you said, like it is a great, it's actually, it's a beautiful um, game the way they play it. And for us, again, it's just exposure. And I think you guys are helping a lot more than you guys know. And so, again, if we can continue that and push the envelope, then I think these girls are going to get the respect, especially how I think now it's really cool to see the NBA guys come into our games. And yes. she went to the Laker game. She's went to the Clipper game. Um, you know, a lot of the girls, you know, around the league have been doing that. So, again, if we can start coming together, you know, and working together, I think that will definitely help. So. All right, Kevin, I, I burnt out all my time. I actually went a minute and a half over. But, KT, what you got, man? No, I'm good, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. You, you sure you want that? That's what you want? All right, Coach Nana. <laughs> Welcome to the championship rounds. This is a part of the show with Kevin and I. We go one-on-one, -on -one and you are now officially calling all the shots. Have you ever played a game called Would You Rather before? No, I have all not. Right. Well, the rules are very simple, Coach. Both KT and I are going to pitch an idea, a concept to you. You select one of those concepts, and that host will gain a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this game of championship rounds. And just for all of y'all who are watching, the champ is here. I am the defending champion right now. So I don't know. You know, I, you like know I, I do want to say something. What do you want to say? Coach Nana, I'm the one that's been talking to you, reaching out oh. to you to get you on this show. Yes. So, um, that's low, Coach. I'm just that's asking low. for a little grace, Coach. I'm, I'm desperate right now. So <laughs> go ahead, B. Jones. Continue. All right. Here we go. Round number one. Coach Nana, would you rather have an award named after you that is given to another Asian American that is following that hard road and you're going to help lift them up by the Natalie Nakase Award or... Would you rather have a shoe made by Nike named after you and the proceeds go to multiple basketball scholarships in your name? 
So you, I'm, I'm trying to do this for the culture. You know what I'm saying? You can help another Asian American young lady to get that exposure to A Aoki Lee. Think about some of the amazing Asian Americans that are balling right now. But you can also have WNBA players and NCAA players with your shoes and scholarships in your name. Yeah, the war seems a little shoot. bit. The war seems a little bit too like arrogant, a little bit. So I go, I go this way. B <sighs> Jones, you bet not. Don't do yeah. it like that. I go with the shoes. Well, like unique. Yeah. Don't, don't be arrogant. Why? Why is it a negative? <laughs> it's just him because you didn't go his his way. That's why. That's why. Where's your button? You should hit a button. <sighs> All right, round number two. Now yeah. I'm in my feelings. Yes. <laughs> All right, so round number two. Talk it up. Talk it up. Here. Would you rather host your own cooking show where you travel the world interviewing athletes and celebrities as they take you to their favorite places to eat in their hometowns or or would you rather host a YouTube basketball series where you are coaching and you get to invite the best players in the world, pros and non-pros, one-on-one uh, -on -one in the gyms in which they grew up in. So you get to interview them, play kind of a little bit of one-on-one -on -one and talk basketball, talk hoops with an instructional series on YouTube. I mean, you guys should know my answer, yeah. right? I said my comfort zone. Yeah, he's on the court. The therapy is getting on the court. Uh, so not cooking. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't have had to cook, but I, I totally get that one. I totally get. That one. Well, I didn't have to cook. Oh, I thought yeah. I said I had to cook, but then yeah. I'm in the kitchen, like. Yeah, you're just hosting a show and eating with people. That's all, Coach. That's all good. And that's, we, yeah, we want to be on the court. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can oh, smell well. the gymnasium right now. The fresh I'm getting my the shoes right on now. the floor. Okay, yeah. Joe, she already picked yours. Let's go. I get it. Come on. You know what that means? It's one to one, and we are now down in the sudden death. Want to take off on this last question. Oh, there you go. Keep sweat. Here we go. Coach, would you rather go back in time, knowing what you know now, and be able to speak to a 20-year-old Natalie Nikase and give her some advice, or fast forward 10 years, and now you're an established head coach in the WNBA, but now you have your own coaching tree full of coaches throughout the WNBA and college. Or you can go back in time and give yourself some advice. Oh, you already said your piece, man. Stop. <laughs> That's easy. I go forward. I don't think you can go backwards in life. I don't like that. It is it is what it is. Your life is, is your life. Learn from your mistakes. Come on. Go forward. But <laughs> well, Coach, you got a ring. And I got a belt. Thank you so much. Without you, it would have been three straight for B. Jones if I didn't win this one. But thank you so much, Coach. No we champions, no B. Jones. You don't know nothing about that, man. We champions. So just, it, was, it was great. It was good options. but Yeah, it was great options, B. Jones. But mine was better, though. I appreciate you playing. You, you worked hard. Both teams played hard, hard, man. You work really hard. Well, if I ever create a time machine, the last person I'm calling is Coach now. now. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to go back you and tell your younger self, Natalie dribble left in that <laughs> game or nothing. <laughs> you had an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. It's all good, Coach. All right, here we go. The title of the show is Sports Life Talks. You got next. So now everybody's rocking with you. We all got to know what does the future hold for Coach Natalie? Again, I don't want to go too forward. That's just not how I see life. Um, but so for us, right now, the Las Vegas Aces are trying to defend a title. Boom. Simple. That's hey, it. that's it. Hey, this is about defending the crown. Huh? That's it. Everyone's after us. I get it. But, you know, we're going to put in the work and we're going to try our best to defend that title. All right, Coach, do you have any shout outs you want to give? Shout outs. Gosh. I mean,. I guess I can give a shout out to my best friend. Um, her name is Melissa Renfro. And I think uh, for everyone who has a best friend, um, you know, it's vital. Someone that you can go to, ups and downs. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know why she's my best friend is because she tells me the truth. Mm. Mm, that's so important. So. And I hope after she watches this, she say, yeah, Natalie, you should have gave your younger self some advice. So Mouth of the South could have could have." <laughs> <laughs> we're like the same. We're like the same. We do very man. Yeah. All right, Coach Nana. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Coach, who are you giving your game ball to? So I hope um, I hope this actually comes through, but I think Asia Wilson should be on the show. 
Ooh, yeah, coach, uh, you, coach. Yeah, we're gonna need for you to talk to him for us. Um, <laughs> coach, I was already a fanboy for you. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to remain professional for 30 minutes with H.O. Wilson. Good uh, lord. But, Have, but, let's say oh, a prayer. Let's just okay. say a prayer. Did you pray? Let me tell you why. Um, number one, she's the best female athlete, right? Yes, the agreed. Um, agreed. And she's in it. But more importantly, that people don't know her as much. Um, again, because we're Ooh. not close, but she's the best, one of the best human beings I've ever met. Like, oh hands down. It's not like, like she's very humble. She's the best, but she's a really good human being. And so I would love for people to know more about her. Well, and coach, you got my not only that, coach, she has one of the, the best mid-range games in in the WNBA. Oh, and highest acumen as well. Oh, like her God. passing acumen is crazy. Yeah. And that's just her as an athlete, but her as a person, she'll not she'll knock your socks off. Like you guys would be rolling laughing the whole time. Like only if I okay, if you can make this happen, I mean you're already family. You won't ever be able to get rid of us if we ain't like <laughs> if I do this, y'all have to wear aces gear when we go to Dallas. Oh, oh I, say hey, say less. Ooh, no, no, say no, less. I'm a fan. I'm a wing. Yes, we you, know, we, you know what? I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. AJ Wilson jerseys, Kelsey Plum, great whatever. No there you go. Front row. You guys need to sit front row. All right. We coming. We coming. Yeah, we, we will be there. All right. Well, Asia Wilson, you are officially on the clock. We we hope you can come join our show and tell your amazing story. But coach, nah, nah, you are the setting the standard. You are a warrior. You are a trailblazer. You are unique and one of a kind. Coach, nah, nah, you got next. Thank you for coming on the show. You've been a blessing, and uh, I can't wait to watch this with myself. Sports Life Talk Nation 2023 is here. We told y'all we was gonna be bigger and better. This thing is, is just is getting out of hand with how many dope shows we got coming up. We hope y'all enjoyed this one. Listen, I invited y'all early. If you didn't smash that subscribe button, please do so now. Become part of our family. Lock in with us. We got so much amazing stuff going on. And, uh, and don't forget to share this show. Somebody out there need to hear this story. Somebody Somebody out there want to learn about what's going on in the world. And we need to keep this WNBA thing. We need to be the tip of our tongue. Every time we open up our mouths, we need to be talking about these amazing women playing basketball. And uh, Kevin, we go live every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Y'all can come be a part of the show. It's a live show. So you can slide in the comments and watch me present the best takes and roast KT live on television. And uh, I don't know, Kevin, what am I missing? I'm, I'm still, I'm, she said the Asian Wilson thing threw me off. I'm going to be honest with you. From that point down, I've been I, you know, I'm just rambling at this stage, Kevin. What, what am I missing, man? B. Jones. Make him say, uh. Uh. Coach Nana, thank you so much for rocking with us. This has been a really dope show. Your story is amazing. Whatever you need from us in Dallas, please let us know. Okay. I need those jerseys. I need you guys to be. Ordering them tomorrow. Front, front row, screaming for the aces. That's all I need. Hey. Okay. Living yes, your life. Hey, let's go. Let's that paper. Sports Life Talk Nation. We love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect yeah. each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got it. Next. Yeet. See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next. Just a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity What's up next is you, at least you better be Yeah, you got next, yeah I can feel it, you're a winner just like me You got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time and you'll see Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next If you got next, then you're just like me If you got next, if you got next, yeah Life talking this Yeah, 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 yeah Sports life talking this